Hello viewers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be taking you through my prediction on Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education English Paper 3. And I'll be specific to the second essay, that is the compulsory set text, A Doll's House by Johann Henrik Ibsen. And as I promised in my earlier video, I said that I am going to come up with a question that I believe can be tested in this year's KCSC. Before that, viewers, allow me to kindly ask those who are new he here to hit on through the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that anytime we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Again, to our subscribers, I continue thanking you very much. Question. Sometimes in life, the deeds we engage in can come to haunt us or people close to us. Drawing illustrations from Johann Henrik Ibsen's play, A Doll's House, validate this statement and as we are aware when you receive your paper and you want to start writing your essay then you will begin from the introduction so your first, first paragraph is going to be the introduction at the introduction part you should paraphrase and show your understanding of the question. Like in this case, a probable introduction would be in Johann Henrik Ibsen's play A Doll's House, comma, various characters carry out various actions that lead to agony to themselves as well as to their loved ones. That is a probable introduction that you can put up. From the introduction, you now move to the various points of interpretation or points of discussion. And always, as you know, the first sentence of a paragraph should have what we call the topical sentence and in the topical sentence the candidate is announcing what he or she is going to talk about followed by illustrations then lastly the clincher sentence that really connects back to the question so i have uh, divided my board here into three columns and this is what I'm going to use to come up with the, the various uh, points. So on the first column there is the character that we're going to talk about. Then uh, the second column there is the deed that the character engages in and lastly on the third column, there is how that kind of deed haunts the character. So the first character to be discussed, which will basically form the first paragraph, is Nora. And Nora's first deed is that she forges her papa's uh, signature. So we realize from uh, the conversation that Nora has with Krogstad when Krogstad visits her the first time in trying to blackmail her into persuading her husband to retain him at the bank, it occurs that Nora had forged the father's uh, signature. It is evident 
that on the bond that uh, Krogstad drew up to lend Nora the 250 pound loan to save her husband's life was dated 2nd of October. Yet Nora's papa died on 29th of September. It also occurs that the writings on that bond are Nora's handwriting, yet it was Nora's papa who was supposed to sign. So that is the nature, that is how Nora forges her papa's signature. So a candidate should go deep and bring about the nature of forgery and not just uh, mentioning that Nora forges her father's signature. How does that deed haunt Nora? So it is the deed that now leads to Krogstad's blackmail. And Krogstad makes it clear to Nora that should he lose his small post at the bank, then Nora is also going to lose her position. So it is through this forgery that Nora now exposes herself to this blackmail by Krogstad. It also haunts her when Nora contemplates of committing a suicide. She contemplates of running away from her matrimonial home and even killing herself. That is when, during the time that Torvald gets to read the contents of Krogstad's letter detailing all the fraud that were committed by Nora and Nora having taken the 250 pound loan behind his back, Nora seems to be prepared to run away. So that those are some of the ways in which Nora's deed of forging her father's signature haunts her. We can also use uh, Nora to illustrate our second point. And now, in the second instance, her deed is that of taking the 250 pound loan behind Toval's back. So, it, 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 we get to realize that at one point, Torvald left his workplace because there was no prospect of promotion. He had to earn money anyway. So he overworked himself and in the process became dreadfully ill. The doctors advised that he be taken to the south in Italy for treatment. Having no alternative, Nora decided to lend money, to, to borrow money from Krogstad. That is 250 pound loan that she used to save her husband's uh, life. From Mrs. Christine Lind, we get to realize that in this Victorian society, a woman cannot borrow money without the consent of the husband. But Nora borrows the £250 loan from Krogstad anyway. So that deed haunts her a great deal. She has to take to odd jobs. That is knitting, embroidery, crochet work, and such sort of uh, jobs in order to repay uh, Krogstad's loan. Again, Nora has to type late into the night to repay the loan. There is also psychological trauma that is in uh, Nora. It occurs to us that sometimes with the thoughts of repaying the loan, Nora gets to her wit's end and she tells Mrs. Christine Lind that at times she normally sits somewhere imagining that she had some secret admirer somewhere, some old rich admirer who after his death 
leaves a will written that all my property and wealth are to be given to Nora Helma in cash. Again, there, is, there, there are also instances of the soliloquies where Nora always speaks to herself and fears that Krogstad may make real his threat of exposing her to her husband, uh, Torvald. The third point, we have Dr. Rank's father and uh, the deed that he engages in is that he seems to be partial to asparagus, pate de foie gras, truffles, oysters, heaps of pot and champagne. And this we find from the conversation that Nora has with Dr. Rank. And uh, this kind of uh, lack of temperance on the part of uh, Dr. Rank's father from the way he uses the various drugs there, we realize that Dr. Rank in the process has inherited a spinal disease. What Nora tells Mrs. Lind that Dr. Rank has a consumption of the spine. For that matter, Dr. Rank is depressed and uh, Mrs. Lind, who is visiting the Helmers, is keen and observant enough to realize that Dr. Rank is depressed and uh, Nora attests to this fact. Later on in the conversation that Nora has with Dr. Rank, Dr. Rank foreshadows his death and Dr. Rank tells uh, Nora that when he sends a card with a black cross on it, that will show that his ugly end or the suicide that he is contemplating will have begun. And that happens after the Tarantella dance when Nora and Toval Helma retires back to their room. They receive a card with a black cross on it to show that Dr. Rank has finally ended his own life. Point four, that is Krogstad. And the deed that Krogstad engages in is that Krogstad forges someone's name. Krogstad, at the beginning, uh, the, the very first time we hear of Krogstad is from Dr. Rank and Krogstad hearing the news of Toval Helmer being appointed the new bank manager comes to plead with him to keep him at the bank. Of course, that does not materialize. But then Dr. Rank tells Mrs. Lind and Nora that he is morally deceased. Later on, Krogstad himself confesses to Nora that he was guilty of indiscretion. Later, when Nora, having been blackmailed by Krogstad to persuade her husband Torvald to keep him at the bank, and Nora asks Torvald what this Krogstad was guilty of, then Toval Helmer says that he forged someone's name. From the horse's own mouth, that is from Crowstad's own mouth, he says that he was guilty of indiscretion. And every way seems closed to him after that, despite the matter not coming to court. And he says that that is what has led him to take to the unscrupulous business that Nora knows of. And of course, that of uh, 
giving loans to people and uh, using very underhand ways in doing that like he gave Nora the loan without the husband's consent something that should not be there again he says that at this point in time he desires to win back as much respect as possible because his sons are at this point growing up and again it is because of the forgery that he committed why Tovald would not also want to retain him at the bank. So in all those ways, Krogstad is haunted for having forged someone's name. Uh, always, we give four points with at least three illustrations for each and every point. But then there are some other points here. There are some other two additional points that you can also look at. And uh, number five, we have Tovald. And uh, Tovald's deed is that he fails to protect Nora at her point of vulnerability. Before he reads the letter from Krogstad detailing the fraud committed by his wife, Nora, he keeps on giving his wife Nora one assurance after the other. At one point, when Nora tells him not to send the dismissal letter to Krogstad, uh, Torvald seems to underestimate her fear by assuring her that come what will, she may be sure that he will have both courage and strength if they be needed and that he will be man enough to take everything upon himself. There is another statement that he makes towards uh, the time that he now gets to read Krogstad's letter. He tells Nora, do you know Nora? I have often wished for a time that you were threatened by some great danger so that I might risk my life's blood and everything for your sake. And really, that is what prompts Nora to now tell him to read the letters. Again, Nora has also kept on telling her friends and her inner circle about the kind of great love that Torvald has for her. For example, Nora tells Dr. Rank in their conversation that Torvald is inexpressibly and devotedly in love with her. Again, when Mrs. Lind asks Nora when she intends to disclose for Torvald the, the great secret of her hand in saving his life, she tells Mrs. Christine Lind that when Torvald is no longer as devoted to her as uh, he is presently. Later, when uh, Torvald ultimately reads Krogstad's letter detailing the fraud by Nora, now Nora who has all along been the skylark, been the feather brain, been the feather head, been the little luck twittering, now becomes a miserable creature with silly excuses, becomes a thoughtless woman, becomes a hypocrite, becomes a liar, and was a criminal. So when uh, Torvald fails to protect Nora, and the wonderful thing, as Nora calls it, does not happen, then we see Nora decide to see that Torvald is all but a stranger to her. Torvald is not the man that she had known him to be. And for that matter, Nora decided to walk out of her marriage. Again, this also brings a psychological distress to Torvald because for the first time, we now see him also having a soliloquy. 
So Liloki, up to this point, has been a preserve for Nora to show how she is psychologically disturbed. But towards the end of the, uh, the text, on page 120, Toval makes this statement, Nora, Nora, empty, she's gone, the most wonderful thing of all, bringing about his distress and anxiety. The last character that you can also use to interpret this question and to come up with your point is that of uh, Mrs. Lind. The deed is that she yields Krogstad for a rich man and her excuse is that she wants to take care of her bedridden mother as well as her two brothers who cannot fend for themselves. So that action or that deed haunts her in that the rich man dies, the rich man leaves her with nothing, no inheritance, no children. And she even paradoxically says that the rich man left for her not even grief to live upon, meaning she knew no love during this wedlock. Again, uh, she begins to try herself at a small shop. She moves to a small business, but they all 